Now, up until now, we haven't really used these arrays in a very efficient manner. Simply echoing out the values by manually putting in the keys is not, doesn't really illustrate the full potential of an array. This doesn't mean you can't do this this way, and many times you will want to do it this way. But let's take a look at what you can do when using loops. Now, there is a loop that's built really specifically for arrays, and that is the for each array. And this thing comes really in handy. So I'm going to go ahead and take out all of these sorting functions here and change a couple things. So we're going to give ourselves a little bit of space here. We're going to keep this. Actually, I'm going to delete all but one of these and keep this for reference here. And to write a for each loop, it takes this format. So we're going to give the parameters or the rules for the loop here in the parentheses and then and in the brackets here is where we tell it what to do while looping. So we first need to specify the array that we want to loop through. And we'll go ahead and use the hosts array. Now the most basic way to do this is simply grab the value. And to do that we say hosts as and then we come up with a variable that we want to store the value in. Uh, many times we'll use something simple like value. So we'll do that here. So it's going to run through the host array. And for each key in there, it's going to grab the value and store it in value. And then run it again, replace that with the next value, and so on. So let's go ahead and take this here and drag it up into our loop and instead of hosts here we just want to echo out value so this will run through three times because we have three keys and spit out the value of each key so I'm going to change my heading here and we'll go ahead and save and we'll take a look so now we got a list of the names without having to manually put in the keys. So this is a little more helpful. Now let's go a step further. Go ahead and copy this block here. Many times you'll find it's helpful to actually get the key along with the value. And in order to do that, we simply just change a little bit of the rules here in the loop. So for host as, and then instead of value, we're going to say key. So this will store the key. And then value. So now we have two variables we can access. So let's go ahead and toss the key in here. So let me just uh, put a number sign here, and we'll output the key. So I'll go ahead and save this and take a look. There you go. So host number zero, host number one, host number two. Now let's get a little clever with this here. Go ahead and copy this one. Paste it below. So I set these arrays up the way I did for a purpose. We're going to take advantage of this first array to access the second array. So now we can personalize this a little more. And we can go ahead and get the duty of each host. So let's go ahead and take the host out of here. And let's put value here instead. And instead of using value here, we're going to go ahead and access the duties array. And where the key would be, we're going to go ahead and put in the value. So we're going to take advantage of the value, which we know is going to be our name, and place it in here where the key belongs, which should grab the duty associated with each host. So I'll go ahead and save this. And there you go. So 
that should give you a little more insight into the power of arrays. Now let's go ahead and save this. It's a copy. 